The UK has just switched on a huge power-generating machine that floats on the ocean while it holds down two water turbines in a fast-moving tidal stream. Dubbed the world's most powerful tidal turbine, the device is the size of a jumbo jet and can produce enough power to supply electricity to 2,000 UK homes. Here are the details. CNBC reports that a massive tidal turbine that can generate 2 megawatts of electricity has started to feed power to the UK's grid. Located in the waters off the Orkney Islands, the giant turbine, called O2, is about the size of a Boeing 747 and weighs 680 metric tons. The O2 turbine floats like a boat and can be towed by small tugboats to any position, where it is then connected to anchors and a thick electrical cable that feeds its power to the grid. Next, the O2 lowers its giant arms that support two 20-meter-long turbine blades. As seawater has more than 800 times the density of air, these blades produce more electricity than similarly sized wind turbine blades produce, enough to power 2,000 UK homes per year. One of the biggest problems with power turbines is that they need their parts maintained regularly. The O2 solves this problem by having its arms attached to massive hydraulic hinges that can easily lift the blades up to the surface for easy access. Another great advantage of tidal systems like the O2 is that tides are very predictable, compared to wind and sunshine. The company that built the O2 is called Orbital Marine Power. The company's CEO says they plan to commercialize the technology by deploying many more tidal turbines like the O2. The Times newspaper reports that trains powered by human sewage and discarded food will be introduced to Britain's railway for the first time under plans to phase out dirty diesel engines. A full-size bio-ultra train capable of carrying 120 passengers is being developed with government funding. The lightweight, low-cost train will be fueled by biomethane. Biomethane is a renewable gas made from organic waste. Britain currently has a number of sewage plants fitted with fermentation tanks. These fermentation tanks are filled with a combination of human sewage sludge, rotting food waste, and other organic waste to create a potent mixture that is digested by bacteria in a process that creates methane gas. The gas then rises to the top of the pungent mixture, where it is siphoned off to mechanisms that separate the methane from other gases. The new, lightweight trains will burn the gas in special engines that will convert it into electrical power, which will charge the train's batteries and drive its motors. The rail cars are expected to reach speeds of up to 80 kilometers per hour. A quick quiz question for you. Faced with a rise in radiation above safe levels in the area around a nuclear power plant, what should you do? Should you A. Calmly raise the alarm, find the cause and fix it, B. Change your definition of safe levels and deny anything is wrong. If you answered A, you're one of those boring, sane people. If you answered B, you might just be working for China's National Nuclear Safety Administration. Here's what you need to know. There is an imminent radiological threat at Taishan Nuclear Power Plant in China's Guangdong province, according to CNN, citing a memo from French company Framatome, which part owns and operates the plant. Documents sent to U.S. officials by the company have also accused China's National Nuclear Safety Administration of raising its own acceptable limits for radiation leaks into the surrounding area to avoid the plant being shut down. In a separate statement, Framatome's parent company, EDF, explained there had been an increase in the concentration of xenon and krypton gases in the primary circuit of reactor number one at Taishan, according to Reuters. These elements have radioactive qualities. According to CNN, EDF described production of these gases as a known phenomenon caused by a degradation of the housing of the fuel rods. They added that this housing is the first of three barriers between the rods and the outside. Taishan is the first plant in the world to operate a next-generation EPR nuclear reactor, a design that has been subject to years of delays elsewhere, according to The Guardian. A 2018 report by Factwire detailed an array of problems at the site. As of May 30th, radiation around Taishan had reached 90% of what was already a revised limit, according to a Framatome memo to the U.S. Department of Energy, cited by CNN. The memo suggested that the Chinese plant operator may now be pushing for China's National Nuclear Safety Administration to further increase the plant's shutdown limit. A statement published on the plant's website, Sunday Night Local Times, said environmental readings for the plant and its surrounding area were normal, according to CNN. What's more, publicly, Framatome has issued a carefully worded statement saying that according to the data available, the plant is operating within the safety parameters. But you don't have to be a nuclear physicist to see that this is dodgy territory. In fact, you don't have to be much of anything for three reasons. 
Number one, Framatome's warning was sent to the U.S. Department of Energy, asking to be allowed American technical assistance in order to resolve the issue. A message like this is of course not going to go down well with their business partners in China, and so isn't a decision taken lightly. Number two, Framatome's own message described the situation as urgent. The situation is an imminent radiological threat to the site and to the public, and Framatome urgently requests permission to transfer technical data and assistance as may be necessary to return the plant to normal operation. Its memo read, We have to presume that nuclear power plant operators do not just throw around words like imminent and urgent for fun. And number three, most importantly, if you look closely at the plant's claim that the radiation levels are normal, you'll notice that it's potentially meaningless if you're prepared to just change what your definition of normal is. According to the Framatome memo, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration has revised its radiation level limit to more than double its initial figure. And the conclusion from the French operating company to the U.S. Energy Department was, this increases off-site risk to the public and on-site workers. The extent of that risk remains unclear, and according to the BBC, the xenon and krypton were released into the atmosphere deliberately, not by accident. However, the fuel rod issue that caused the buildup of those gases poses questions for the plant, and simply changing safety limits in order to cover that up is a dangerous game to play. Furthermore, it adds to suggestions of a somewhat lax approach to safety at the site, going back to before it opened. According to Factwire, after weaknesses were found in the French-designed reactor vessel heads used at the plant, China's National Nuclear Safety Administration only required the plant to develop a testing method for its own reactor vessel head as soon as possible. We don't know about you, but here at Tomo News, we use the phrase as soon as possible for things like ordering lattes, not for checking if our nuclear reactor is working. What's more, in the months before the plant opened in 2018, the very same National Nuclear Safety Administration published a separate inspection report cited by Factwire which listed 20 areas in which Taishan could improve. It may well be that some of these are normal teething issues that always occur before any major construction opens, and the report was obviously designed to eliminate them. But once an authority has agreed to double its idea of safe limits on radiation, it's probably not unreasonable to question some of their other decisions too. According to TEPCO, last week a probe touched melted nuclear debris in the damaged second reactor at the Fukushima nuclear plant for the first time since the disaster eight years ago. According to the Asahi Shimbun, the purpose of this mission was to determine how solid the melted fuel is and whether it could be transported away from the site. The robotic probe designed by Toshiba weighs about 1 kilogram and is fitted with 3 centimeter long claws. It can extend 15 meters and lift pieces of up to 8 centimeters in diameter that weigh up to 2 kilograms. The probe is also equipped with a dosimeter and a camera. According to TEPCO, workers manually inserted the probe through a crack in the side of the number 2 reactor's containment vessel. Workers then remotely operated the probe from a building close to the number 2 reactor building. The probe lifted pebble-like nuclear fuel debris at five spots and failed to pick up debris in one area. The probe also touched melted fuel on the worker's scaffold below the reactor's pressure vessel. According to a joint central government and TEPCO plan, the retrieval process will start in earnest at one of the reactors in 2021. According to Bloomberg, full decommissioning of the Fukushima plant is expected to take 30 or 40 years. For more news animations and explainers, Hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.